All right, now let's talk about finding your ideal clients and connections. Every person who is doing business on LinkedIn needs an outreach list. Here is how to build your outreach list. So the first thing is, you know, have a list of people that you're wanting to get in front of. I mean, that kind of goes without saying, like you need to know who you're targeting, right? So if you have a list of people, prospects or prospective collaboration partners or even influencers, that you want to build relationships with, um, win-win relationships with, then make, make that list. Using the search bar on LinkedIn, you need to type in a word related to your product or service, or that helps you to identify your ideal client. For example, if I'm trying to reach out to behavioral health professionals in my community, like therapists, the first thing that I'm going to type into the search bar is therapists. Now you'll see that there are a whole lot of other qualifiers that LinkedIn gives you, such as posts, groups, events, and each of these could be super valuable on their own. But for now, let's focus on people. From here, there are two other qualifiers that might be helpful, and these are connections and location. For locations, maybe I want to find therapists in Denver. I'll type in Denver. Now my list is narrowed down. Next is connections. First degree connections are people that I'm already connected to, but second degree connections are people who I share at least one first degree connection with. This can be a great trust building bridge, so I'll click second degree connections. The next thing that I want to do is to make sure that they're actually active on LinkedIn. If they don't have a profile picture or if they haven't posted in a while, I don't want to waste my time. I can click into their profile, check out their activity, and as long as they are active, they might be a good person to reach out to. Now I can build a list of people in the profession that I am looking for in the location that I am in who I also share some connections with and who are also active on the platform. This focuses my efforts even more. Now, if I'm not geographically bound and I want to connect with other people of an interest, I can type in a hashtag like hashtag mental health into the search bar and see who on LinkedIn is posting on that topic. If my company only works with other companies that have blogs, then I can type in hashtag blog and see people who are posting from their blogs on LinkedIn. It can also be helpful to join groups around your ideal connections or create or attend events where your people might also be. You can find those filters when you type something into the search bar too. Think about intersections. Intersections are what allow you to focus on who you are talking to when you are networking or creating content. And it's the thing that's going to allow you to get results. Here's what I mean. If I told you to meet me on South Walnut Street in Bloomington, Indiana, though you may have an idea of where this is at, you could look it up, right? A street covers a lot of distance. Chances are you may never find me. But the second that I tell you to meet me at South Walnut and 2nd Street in Bloomington, Indiana, you can very easily find me. It's latitude and longitude. You need two different intersections to have directions to know where something is. Applying filters actually helps you to find where your people are. It doesn't matter if you know who your product is for, if you do not know where they are at. The more intersections that you have, the more focused your efforts will be. If your audience is therapists, that's you know a lot of folks. Therapists in Rockville, Maryland, that's closer. Adolescent therapists in Rockville, Maryland, who have posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days? All right, now you're getting somewhere. Brands, platforms, followings, all are built one person at a time. But you can only find that one person if you know exactly who you have in mind. Oh, that rhymed. Oh, that did too. Oh, it stopped. Once you have a list of really specific people, and before you ask for a connection, you need to build up some goodwill. And for this, you need to leave comments. You should comment on someone's post at least twice before you ask for a connection request. Mandy thinks that it should be a regular part of your workday to leave at least five meaningful comments on different people's posts in a day. 
Leaving at least five meaningful comments a day is a really good place to start. Comments are huge and so underutilized. I have so many people I've worked with that have landed clients just from leaving comments or landed hundreds of connection requests within the same day because of an awesome comment they left. Here, meaningful means that it's at least three lines long and that it's hyper specific to what they are talking about. This will put you on their radar so that your connection request doesn't just you know come out of nowhere when you send it. And if you would like to streamline and organize your list building process even more, then LinkedIn Sales Navigator can be a great tool. It's a paid feature of LinkedIn, but it allows you to create even more filters to create lists, and it pulls people's profile information onto the dashboard itself. Some of its most helpful features is that you can set a filter to only display people who have posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days so that you know that they are somewhat active. You can also search by companies, employee count, recent job changes, and even more. You can also create alerts from your list so that you are notified when people from your list post so that you're there ready to comment. A helpful process is to create a list of folks and also create a commented once, commented twice, and ready to send connection list. This way, after you comment on someone's stuff, you can click move to a different list and place them in the commented once list, then commented twice list, and then ready to send connection list. All right, now it's time to talk about making connections. Before you start posting content on LinkedIn, there is one more important step, and that is to make connections. You need to spend the majority of time engaging with people and building those relationships more so than posting content. And I know that might seem weird uh, coming from a content marketer who is, who's built her business around content, but you have no idea, Clint, how many times people are like, I'm posting all this great content on LinkedIn and it's just not working. And I'm like, well, are you building relationships? Well, what do you mean? Are you engaging with other people? Are you sending connection requests? Well, no. And I'm like, well, then you can't expect your content to work. Because here's what happens, Clint, is the same people see your content over and over again. If you're not growing your audience, you have the same people that you've probably known since high school, a lot of them, right, that aren't your target market that are seeing your content. That's not doing you any good. Of course, if other people are engaging with your content, the, their followers might see it if they're commenting. but it becomes a waste of time when you're posting loads of awesome content and you're not growing, deliberately growing your connection base. It is not worth the time. And so this is why I stress, you know, as a huge advocate of content marketing, as someone who has built her business around content and my personal brand around my content, I love content, but I am telling you right now, content is pointless if you are neglecting the relationship building aspect of LinkedIn. A big part of this is that if you don't spend time building up your network, the pool of people who see your content will be stale or uninterested. You need to connect with people who may actually care about what you are posting. Because the way LinkedIn works too, is they're going to reward you for those new connections. So every time you build relationships and you send new connection requests and you are starting conversations with people, those people in your LinkedIn message inbox, they're going to see your content. Link, the algorithm shows them your content first because the link, the algorithm sees that you just built that new relationship. You're talking to this person in Messenger. So they're going to see your content. So it's a no brainer. If you want your content to get in front of your ideal prospects, your ideal target market, then start conversations with them, get them in your network, send them messages and start talking to them because the algorithm is then going to show your content to them because you're a new connection. Mandy recommends that when you reach out to people to connect, Give them a personalized message as to why. Like, hey, first name, I saw that we share some connections and I've really enjoyed your content about X and I thought it would be great to connect. With this approach, narrowing your content list down to specific people, engaging with their content, and then giving them a reason to connect, you will dramatically increase the likelihood that they will say yes. You can send up to 100 connection requests a week, which means that go-getters could send up to 20 a day, Monday through Friday. And when someone accepts a request, that frees up that spot. So within a couple of months of hustle, you can build up your connections by the thousands. 
Can we talk about actually being social on social media for a second? Essentially, the people who do the best on social media are actually social. Sure, there are scheduling platforms that make it easier to post on multiple platforms or auto message prospects, but what you can't automate is the actual social side of things. All the same rules apply on social media as they would for in-person networking events. Think about it. There, you would walk up to a group of people talking and you'd first listen in on the conversation, which is, you know, building a list and viewing activity. And next, you might make a meaningful response to what they are saying, which is commenting, and then you would introduce yourself. This is the same thing as sending a connection request. Then you might say what you think about a topic or ask questions or ask other people's perspectives on an issue. This is posting content. And then if all of this seems like a good fit, then you ask someone if they would like to talk further. This is the same thing as initiating a meeting or a sale. Sending someone a connection request out of the blue and asking them to buy your stuff or schedule up with you right away is not something you would ever do at a party. So just don't do it on social media. You would never be at a party and say, nice to meet you. Have you thought about using video in your marketing strategy to increase your inbound leads? That sucks. Nobody likes this. Matter of fact, copy the link to this post or a video and then bookmark it and send it to the next spammer who connects with you and tries to sell you something without getting to know you first. Let's make this the video that someone shares with cold prospectors with no manners.